You uh, know, and you can watch it for yourself. Yeah, dude, okay, I, would, I would love to see it in person. There you go. You, know? you guys heard it. You, you would know? love to see it in person on tour with us. For yeah. Yeah, man, they're fucking playing like shit Jesus. right now. <laughs> they don't sure that they were good. Yeah, they sure. Did they, said they, were they good. really think this was acceptable? <laughs> <laughs> they're just like, gets off tour. They're like, you're off the tour. Get the fuck out of here. Use EMG pickups because they help you get the heaviest tone possible. Head over to emgpickups.com and use my promo code HEAVY at checkout and get 15% off. And then once you write the heaviest song of all time, head over to distrokid.com slash VIP slash Garza and save 30% off your membership to get all your songs on all streaming platforms. And now to the heaviest podcast of all time. All right, so why are you guys fucking late? I'm pissed. Oh, Honestly, dude, no. we, we so just hungry. suck, dude. We're fucking rock stars now, dude. We let it get to our heads, you, and now it's just different, dude. Dude, in three months, you fucking changed, Taylor. I'm you're, saying, you're, you're late now. That's what I'm saying. I got, a, I got another different. neck tattoo, and then it just oh, was my. over after that, dude. I was just like, ah, now my shit doesn't stink, dude. We're good. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my goodness. Yeah. <laughs> well, today we have, for the first time, the whole band... Left the supper. Hey. Thank you guys for, for being here. I'm stoked. Hell yeah, we're stoked to be here, bro. Yeah, appreciate I appreciate you having us, man. I love looking at your face, dude. I'm excited to be back here. I love looking at your, your guys' faces. Handsome man, dude. Thank you. <laughs> That's a room full of handsome gents. We got we got Jane some handsome dudes doing in here. Yeah. What's going on? Freshly showered, too. Even, even the guy over the here, show. behind the camera. Like, yeah, handsome dude. as hell, dude. Zach the kid, Zach attack. Yeah. He's behind the camera. He should be in front of the camera, dude. Get this guy in here. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Zach's always in like the solo episodes. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Because Zach is, uh, you always want to surround yourself with people that are smarter than you. Right. Always. For and sure. he's, he's way smarter than me, so. <laughs> So, like, I, I don't think I've ever told him this, but I want him in a pod, so, like, I don't got to talk that much because I know he's going to say something way smarter than me. Right. And we can keep the conversation. You can just kind of, like, roll off of it. Zach Attack, thank you. Appreciate you. <laughs> Zach Attack. Zach Attack. Zach Attack. Hey. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my God. <laughs> this is unprofessional already. Yeah, dude. It's That's, off the chains. We're I mean, drinking this, purple monsters. This is how it goes every time. <laughs> we're in up, the room man. together. That's how it happens. Oh, my goodness. Can we do a quick intro? Yeah. Go, go, go around. Yo, what's up? I'm Taylor. I'm the fucking vocalist. I left to suffer. Hi, I'm Peter. I play guitar. I'm Alex. I play drums. I'm Spinch. I play guitar. I'm Christian. I slap the bass. Oh my! You slap it, Fieldy style. Sometimes. Yeah, like like one percent of the time, but okay. <laughs> he throws it in there for the Fieldy style. Yeah, sometimes I just get so into the set, we're playing a breakdown. I'm just like, nah, fuck the pick. You know I'm just like start, just yeah. start beating it. Yeah. Do you use a pick or a, or a mostly fingers? Uh, I always do pick. Okay, cool. Well, like nine percent of the time. We have a couple of songs where it's like do a little bit of finger stuff. Nice. If you guys want to smoke that, I'm not going to smoke that. Oh, That's man. We you will smoke that. Well, <laughs> since, since you happened to I picked it up and I was like, this looks Twisting our arm, nice. right? I'll just smoke, smoke it if you okay. want, I guess. Yeah. I like dad weed with tobacco and people like hammy shit. It's just like, it's fucking dipped in this fucking caramel fucking it more looks weed. It's scary. It's, <laughs> let's, uh, let's find out. I'm let's give it a look-see. It's huge. I smoked that last time and I was way too high. I'm like, I'm not, I'm not gonna touch that shit again. It looks beautiful. Yeah, it's a fucking masterpiece, dude. Yeah, I'm impressed. Cool. Well, congrats on your new song, Snake. <laughs> Thank, Thank you so, so much. much. Thank you. It's fucking sick. <laughs> it's definitely a, a different direction, kind of uh, for a minute. <clears throat> but I appreciate the uh, the kind words. It was a, uh, it wasn't like weird for us to do it, but it was definitely like a different thing that we did for sure. Right, and I think there's almost like a little bit of almost hesitation and worry that it being not quite as heavy as other things that we've done, that it being received well. But that, of course, has been a pretty good reception to it in general. Yeah, we also had an awesome team <coughs> working on that song with us because mm-hmm. yeah, we worked on it with uh, the drummer from Three Days Grace, Neil Sanderson, and sick, Howard dude. Benson, which is like crazy, you know. So. But yeah, so <laughs> I mean, we you can't really be too too nervous when you have two people who are just heavy hitters like that on your side. Not those, gonna... those are heavy hitters. You're not familiar with uh, Howard Benson. He's produced like P.O.D. and Flames, Sepatola, uh, My Chemical Romance. So I, I like that. That's a very wide range, you know. <laughs> like sure. of a, I mean, he like doesn't just do metal. Doesn't do this, this and like that. Those are the kind of people you want to be like be be around because then they'll, mm-hmm. they'll they'll teach you something. To record heavy music that you wouldn't have tried 
Right. You know. Exactly. You have those people that'll like kind of push you out of your push you out of your comfort zone. Yeah. Because we're so you know, da, 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 you know what I mean? <laughs> Doing yeah. all the like we extra the stuff. Heavy, heavy. <laughs> and then we have those you know, other people who come in and they add the like, you know, cool mm-hmm. chorus structures and totally. different ideas to kind of like make the song flow in a different way, which I think is super healthy to not have like a it be too convoluted within the band and like having like other people touch it, you know, to like give it some new new life. Yeah. How did it so the drummer of uh, I think it was Gray Sneal, he found you guys first, right? Yeah, he actually DM'd me on Instagram and I remember I was getting out of the shower and I like <laughs> I messaged the band. I, I don't I was like I don't know if you guys remember this, but I was like spazzing out and I was like, yo, dude, like no, I think three days Grace followed me first. Like yeah. the actual page. Oh wow. Yeah. And I was just like, yo, what the fuck? Like this like I thought it was fake. And so like I sent it to the like band. I sent it to the band through. and I was like I was like, why the hell did Three Days Grace follow me? And then like not even like a couple minutes after that, I'm like standing there like naked, getting into the shower. Oh, so like weird. on my phone in my bathroom. And uh then I get like a message from Three Days Grace. It's like, yo, dude, your band's sick, da 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 and all this other stuff. And I'm like, yo, what the fuck? You like I've I, we've listened to Three Days Grace since we were kids, you know what I mean? So it's just like what the hell's going on? And then that transposed into Neil hitting me up through his personal account or whatever. And then it was just like a uh, a full circle kind of thing after that. And he just like, you know, expressed how much he liked us and how much he wanted to work with us. And then we worked something out. And now we have uh, three cool songs with the drummer from Three Days Grace co-writing our choruses with us, which is fucking sick. Damn, dude. Uh, just from a message. Dude, like, out of yeah, nowhere. He, uh, he found us through Spotify, through one song. And Lost it was actually, last. yeah, and that's what yeah. I thought was funny, is we had put out <laughs> On Death, and we were figuring it'd be one of those songs that were popping right. off. And it was one of our songs that has decent streams, but definitely isn't in our top five, you know? And he yeah. just found that one. So one weird. of our heavier ones, too, for sure. Mm-hmm. Was it like uh, was it on like a playlist or something? What I, what, I don't think he ever specified. I think that he said that he just found it. Like I think he was just like doing one of those things where you just kind of play something on Spotify and then it <coughs> pop up. But yeah, I don't ever know exactly how he <laughs> or where on Spotify he found us. I'm pretty sure it was just completely random. And he was like, "Yo, this band rips." <laughs> That's it, yeah. random. Hit us up. I'm sorry. I'm 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 honestly afraid to smoke out again because I, I I tried that and like I was it was, dur- it was during the podcast. I'm like I'm not doing it again because I if I get too high I lose focus. I feel you. I lose yeah. focus completely. I do too I need, sometimes. I'm saying why. I can't do it. I tried. Yeah. My words just stop eloquating at all. Like they don't. Add up. <laughs> <laughs> they just like yeah, start yeah, making yeah, up yeah, words, yeah, going sideways. Like I get dyslexic out of nowhere. I don't that know was that a fancy word though, man. Eloquent? Yeah. Eloquent? <laughs> Eloquent? Well, still got it, bro. Well, you still out here. What does that mean? Sometimes. I don't, I don't even Just know what that well, Like, well-spoken. Like, oh. words are put well together. That's eloquent. I can't do that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, didn't know that that was like a, that was like a, a tense of that word. I made it up. Oh. I don't even know if it's real. <laughs> I was about to say, I was like, I don't I'm think that that's down. how that works, but no. we're going to we're no. gonna roll it because I was like, that word sounded nice. It is now. It was like honey. Hey, if you fake it till you make it, it... it you make it. You, you, know, you use you context make clues. Read around it. You know what I mean? You, you can pick it I should have grabbed another out. one of these. I suck. You. It, it, would you finish that one? Yeah. Are you serious? Dude, I'm a piece of shit. What are you doing? <laughs> I'm a piece of shit. <laughs> no, no, no. I have to no. pee, buddy. You are a gifted young, young man, I'm just Taylor. dead ass so tired <laughs> from, the, from just being on the road and stuff. I'm just like trying to stay away. Yeah, yeah how's the tour been for you guys? It's been oh, awesome. incredible. Same. We've just been doing too much. Yeah. <laughs> Doing yeah. the we, we've been we've been doing we got we got we got gifted two ounces of shrooms they're gone okay we've been oh. <laughs> drinking a little more than usual you know what I mean but we've still been crushing it on stage and having fun so like we've just kind yeah. of like you know we this tour package has just been so like exciting and fun for everybody like we're all just like intermingling and hanging out and all the bands are just like mm-hmm. really close and so it just kind of like at the end of every night turns into a party yeah and then so it just kind of you know six weeks deep. You get kind of tired. The, 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 <laughs> and sometimes yeah. the party will start loading. Too, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, sometimes no. like we're out there like doing shots team. at like 3 p.m. You know what I mean? Oh, like no. it's yeah, like I, sometimes I, 1 p.m. You know what I've I mean? I've developed depends. the habit of drinking a twisted tea like almost every day at like by three o'clock. Yeah. By three, you know, you got to get it in. There's a deadline for it. it is, yeah. There is a deadline, but like you know, <laughs> I, I do my work and I'm like I'm feeling great. You know, I don't start yeah. drinking until after the show personally. If I was headbanging after I was drinking, you do other things though. Oh, I do. 
There's other substances that get done before the set. Uh, We're good. Other things? Yeah. You know, you know smoking weed, killing. you know, doing stuff like that. <laughs> are, you, are, you, are you guys smoking dope? Yeah, dude. Yeah. No. We're speedballing, dude. We're straight up smoking to no. We're smoking. We're not. We're actually, not. actually is, is dope not weed? No, dope is weed, it I is, guess, right? considerably. That's what I think yeah. of it as. Like, yeah. But I also, like, but I've also heard also dope being considered as crack. Yeah, that's oh, yeah, that's, 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 that's like that that's one hundred percent what they call it in Atlanta. Yes, yeah, so because like I, that's, I live, that's yeah, a local thing. We yeah. live like in Atlanta, and there's a couple like homeless people that like yeah. roam the streets yeah. outside, and they literally call crack dope. Oh no! Yeah. yeah. So okay. that's what, like, there's, like, it's, like, definitely a, a double, like, entendre thing for that. Yeah. Because yeah. we're here in California, dope means weed, but you guys fucking, so what, you guys are from Atlanta or maybe, like, like around? Yeah. Yeah. I, we live, we live, like, in the perimeter now. Yeah, like, five mi- miles south of downtown. Yeah. By the airport. He lives, like, oh, way out I in, live in the, the sticks. I live in the sticks, in yeah. the woods. Like, it's 20 minutes before you get to the first gas station. Really? Yeah. Gunshots going off all the time just because they're, we live in the woods and you can. How far are you from, <laughs> from these guys? About an hour? two. No, about two with traffic. I was about to say an hour and a half, but yeah, yeah. that makes sense. Yeah. Wow. Uh, right, yeah, yeah uh, Mark lives kind of out there, but that's only like an hour. You know? Damn, I miss Mark, dude. I just yeah. moved out here Same. more recently. Uh, I mean, it was at the beginning of last year, I guess, and we actually filmed the music video for Overwhelming Power at my house the day before I moved in and we were there filming for like six hours and finally at like 2am I remember how cold it was so cold yeah we did it like the middle of January like at night like yeah that part was a little rough but we had a lot but we had pyro yeah there was no (laughs) there was fire going (laughs) on in the middle of the woods yeah (laughs) but there were pyrotechnics yeah It was literally yeah. like the hottest and coldest I've ever been in simultaneously. He's right yeah. next to the pyro yeah. wall. Yeah. He's yeah. right behind him. Yeah. So like his <laughs> front's freezing, but his back is dripping in sweat. And I'm like yeah. Yeah. watching the flames go. I'm thinking like, he's got to ignite. Dude, I was a something. solid like 12 feet in front of you, and I felt it on my back, so I could only imagine how hot it was. Like, man, am I like bi- bipolar, dude? I feel two different dis- things at once. <laughs> yeah. <so crazy>. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Holy shit! Especially if you're, if you're like like a drummer, you're you're already like using all your body parts. So, yeah, so much going on all at the same time. <laughs> yeah, I always get I always get the drummers and the singers the most shit. But without you guys, we're not we're not shit. We, <laughs> we need we, we need a sick drummer. We need a great singer, and uh, and you guys got both those. Otherwise, cool. we're just ripping or something. Don't, you know don't I mean? let them stroke. Let's go. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> it's it might be a fact, but don't say it. Don't yeah, they. yeah, they don't like to give us credit around here. I, you know what, you're right? <laughs> okay, wait. Oh, wait, there, wait, there's two ways that you could approach that. One is like, okay, you don't want to stroke the ego, which is true. However, correct me if, if I'm wrong, Taylor, but so, singers tend to be like, you need to kind of talking a little bit more yeah we're a little sensitive dude yes yes we're because we, yeah. we, we that, writing lyrics we're a little a we're like touched into he our, reacts into our hot, softer side but you he know is what i mean sensitive i am sensitive yes. i'm a hothead but i'm sensitive for it's sure it's funny how that worked but yeah, it's <laughs> fucked. <laughs> fucked up just a tortured individual man fuck i'm just kidding i feel like <laughs> as a unit though we're all pretty good about knowing that everybody brings a very huge chunk of what we are to yeah. the table like we're not anything because we're definitely a hybrid band you know what i mean because yeah. like usually like a lot of bands work where there's like one person writes everything mm-hmm. yeah. and then like there's like the face right like that's so, like yes. they have like those two parts but like for this band it's been like everybody writes and everybody does a bunch of stuff all at once or whatever so it's never like anybody's like in a different spot so it's like i think it's kind of cool because we all work like so cohesively together which yeah. is like i've found through like just being on the road and stuff that's just not a lot how a lot of other bands work no right. yeah and it's, so it's kind of weird whenever like i We're old like school, we explain baby. yeah we explain it to people and they're just like so like one guy doesn't write everything and we're like nah <laughs> they're just like that's weird dude like he was just like and i was just like nah it works for us dude we have a good fucking time we all get into a cab and fucking yeah. riff it up and dude we just our best try. songs are songs that are blends of everybody's riffs like yeah, being yeah. able to get everyone's flavor and influence on it you know mm-hmm. yeah that's one thing that i respect from from you guys is I'll go through all of like the song credits and like it's all your names. Yeah, mm-hmm. I'm like that's because we all touch it. Right. Like every song, like we're always like all like adding stuff to it or whatever. You know what I mean? Sometimes there's like someone who does like you know a little bit more riffs or like a little bit more of this or whatever. But at the end, like it all just balances out. You know what I mean? Right. Per record. Yeah. So mm-hmm. yeah, it's cool and uh, it's great that you guys would naturally do that. And as, as as you already said, like 
you'll be surprised how many bands don't do that. Yeah. It's fucking nuts. Because I was it's just, nuts. like, so accustomed to doing it like this for so long that I talked mm-hmm. to all these other bands, and I'm like, it's, like, alien to me, you know what I mean, to think mm-hmm. about having just, like, to rely on this one person to write all, yeah. everything. It just makes me feel weird. Right. I mean, well, we even let Christian write guitar riffs and stuff like that, which is yeah. not just, like, bass riffs and stuff like that, but also... When we first met him, he was playing guitar in a local band, and he was killing it. So yeah. we want him to have his influence on stuff. And I think there were even like two riffs that you tracked on the new yeah. thing that we got yeah, coming actually, out like, next year. Nah, I sat there in the studio, and like, just played the riffs out. And yeah, I think it's like very cool too because like all this um, uh, LP will, that will be dropping at some point next year. Um, all, of, all three of us play guitar on it, mostly these two, but it's like you can just hear like the different like velocities and like the the feeling. I think it, it just gives yeah, it gives like things different like feelings and stuff, mm-hmm. which is cool because like I can definitely tell like who's the picking dynamics. You know what I mean? Yeah. Because like he'll track the riffs that he writes and he'll track the riffs that he writes, and it makes it feel like the riffs drive differently. Interesting. You know what I mean? So it gives like a different like emotional like push to each of these like yeah. riffs or whatever, which I think is like what makes like. The, or like in my opinion, our music's so special. Obviously, I think it's special because I love it. But it gives you know. us of definitely the the left turns and the ups and downs because it's literally just like it'll it's not be stagnant. Like, it'll you know be what I mean? From riff to riff, like or just riff to chorus, like at the drop of a hat, it's another person yeah. writing that music. So, so it just yeah, there's a diff- there's a different different character to it every time. Yeah, you know, because like it, 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 honestly, like if you listen to both of them play the guitar, their picking is completely different. Of course, yeah, like you can, yeah. it's it's tan, like it's very audible. So like even just like in the music, it gives it like such a different feel, which is like I think is really cool. You know what I mean? It keeps it like fresh, and your brain's always like, "Whoa, this is crazy." I think we like always knew it too, but like once we started playing the same guitars, running through like the same processors and stuff like that, we're like, "Whoa!" Yeah. Like even when we're using pretty much same tones, like it sounds Diff- big just, different. Yeah. Totally yeah, difference for sure. It's, we've we've yeah. always they're said, complimentary too, which is we, cool. We've always said that I've got the right hand and then Jacob's got the left hand. Got some so, bit of bit of bit of so yeah. we just come together. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, it's very cool. Because I dig deep when I pick. I just mm-hmm. I fucking go in that shit. He picks so. pissed, as yeah, I call it. Yeah. Piss pick and pee. And that motherfucker <laughs> does the motherfucker. <laughs> so triple pee. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> pit triple yeah. threat. Uh, <laughs> coming for you. Facts, dude. No, I mean it's crazy. You guys are a real band. Yeah, it's sick, and it's it's always so like, it's so shocking. And then like you can play the same rig, same thing, but if it's someone else playing, like you really told a difference. It's so shocking how like the tone is really in your hands. I never knew that until I met them. You know what I mean? I was just always like in the, like other local bands, and I was like, oh, it's a mm-hmm. guitar. You plug it in. Da, 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 da. You know what I mean? Yeah. But then they were doing it, and I was just like, wow, what the fuck? Like y'all's tones sound completely different, and it's the same fucking thing. You're just like changing the person and like just the way that they play it makes it sound so different. It's how so we weird. came up as guitarists just like influenced us, you know. Like we we came from like the same like range, like definitely a lot of like n- new metal and rock. I would say like some Disturbed, you know, Corn, definitely Lincoln mm-hmm. Park stuff like that at first, and then just kind of like growing from there. And then get more into like the after the burial, suicide, silence, carn effects, and then just like Whoa. those things kind of mended together. And I feel like yeah. that's that's a pretty good representation of what we try to make as as our influence, you know? Yeah, yeah. And like I think it's even funny when we'll like be on the same kind of wavelength of what bands inspired us and be like. Oh, oh, he learned to play, like, Hourglass by Lamb of God. I learned to play Omerta. You know, like, right. it's like we would pick different songs, but, like, we're exactly. going for the same band. Same, like, we, yeah. literally, same, same, like, same, but different. We've been learning <laughs> the same band's riffs over the years, just, yeah. like, different songs, for sure. Yeah. It's cool that you guys embrace your influences, but and then also, dude, the most important part is, like, you put your own thing to it. Yeah. You, you know, and then that's, and that's your band. Absolutely. It's cool. It's, it's really cool. And uh, you're the first, I mean, people I've heard that, Said it out loud that you're inspired by Disturbed, which is sick. <laughs> it's sick. Oh, yeah, no, j- I think that's, it's rad. That's definitely a fucking a Disturbed jig- rocks, dude. I don't give a shit what people I do say fuck about with that it band. Too. I'd, I'd personally learned like one or two of their riffs. I just know that that's some of Jacob's bread and butter, right? Oh, there. bro, I literally the Down with the Sickness album, the Sickness album, I think oh, it was called. Wow. Dude, that yeah, first bro, that was sick. I was like in sixth grade. I think I saw that album in Target, maybe, and I was like, that looks creepy as shit. Oh, the I like little it. head thing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He's yeah, like in the sure. like full body cast, yeah. or like casket little thing. I don't know the, the cast, but um, yeah. 
Yeah, I thought it looked creepy as hell for like a little kid, and I was like, I want to buy that. And then I bought it, and I was like, this is my personality for a little bit. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to identify yeah, as like, this I'm from now on. Sit here for a hot minute. <laughs> coast. Dude, <laughs> some, some of my first riffs were off Saint Anger, the Metallica. Oh, dude, yeah. <laughs> they, they were, dude. Some kind of monster was literally my first riff I ever learned on, on the guitar. Those riffs, oh, riff, bro. Yeah, they do. They do. They they do. I love that album. Hot uh, take. I know. <laughs> I get it. I get it. No, it's sick now. Okay, so now we're talking about Disturbed, and now we're talking about Saint Anger. Two things that don't really get brought up in a, like maybe like a positive. I feel like a lot of people movie. just like shit on it for no reason. You know what I mean? They'll just be like, "Oh, Saint Anger snare tone fucking sucks." It's just like, dude. Like at the same time, you, you, there's other things going on in that yeah. record. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, not it's, not a, it's not just a. It's not just a record of snare hits. It's dude. an arbitrary. Fact. I love the snare on that. Album. <laughs> you do? I don't know. Yes. Wow. With it. Even though <laughs> it is what it is. <laughs> <laughs> That's like I don't know. It's its own thing, but I love. It. I get like, that though exactly. because I'm the exact I get the same sentiment way behind with guitar sure. tones. Like a lot of like, it's I not mean, good, like OG, but I love like, it. <laughs> it, it, is. Like, it is. I love it, it for it being shit. We, oh jam, we, jam that, we jam that album on tour drives a decent yeah. amount for sure. Wow, there's a song called "Invisible Kid." Oh, oh yeah, I think it's drop G. It's, what, a, it's a really low tuning song. Like this is a, these are sick ass. They riffs. went in on those. That's one of the reasons I love it is because like that's those are some of my favorite Metallica riffs. I do love wow. thrash metal, but like I'm more of just like I like the groove type stuff. You know what I mean? I just yeah. feel like this like the more groove in that 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 album for sure. So yeah, it's like personally for me too. Listening to Metallica, like my favorite era of them is from Black Album to Saint Anger. Yeah, like just it's just very groovy. That's funny. I still respect everything <laughs> they've done. Like, it's oh, all yeah. good. Right. But, like, as I, far I, as what I go to, definitely. That. Uh, definitely, like, the early Metallica stuff was what, it, what influenced me for guitar and bass. And that's why I was, like, learning a lot when I was, like, 13, 14. But I think it's, like, later on in life where it's, like, I really fell in love with more career stuff. It's, like, just that 90s to St. Anger um, era that just became my favorite. Hell, yeah. It's, man, it's, like, you guys are, like, a different... Generation. How old? How old are you guys? We I'm 25. Range. Oh yeah, 25. I'm 30. Okay. I'm 24. Whoa. I'm about to turn 28 at the beginning of next year. 27. <sighs> Makes a lot of sense. Okay, so Saint Anger. I was fucking what? 12 when America came out. So you guys were what? Five or six or something. <laughs> It, um, may, it, may, it makes sense, yeah. yeah. So, so when, when you're growing up, and you and you probably you're, you're at a point where you're listening to music, and of course, like it's either corn comes up or like or yeah. or, or, or a black album. Yeah, the, the first stuff you're going to hear is that you're probably yeah. going to hear Saint Saint Anger first. Oh, then that you have a different connection than other people do with with that yeah. that album. Absolutely, it's pretty For cool. Sure. I think it's a pretty cool record. Yeah. I mean, I, love it. I Absolutely. I'm going to be completely honest with you. I never really got into Metallica. That's just never been my thing. <laughs> <laughs> just, I, it's like they always play it and I appreciate it. You know what I mean? Like, I'm not yeah. saying they're bad, but like at all. You know what I mean? Yeah. I just never got the like that put on me at that age or whatever. It was always like yeah. Corn and Linkin Park and you know yeah. what I mean? Like Three Doors Down and shit like that. You know what I mean? So yeah. like. I never really got the whole like Metallica wave, but yeah. I definitely respect and appreciate what they do for sure. Because their riffs, I mean, what they've showed me on like some of the stuff, I'm like, yo, these these riffs do slap. Those riffs are fucking hard <laughs> to play. Those riffs right. fucking slap. My world, bro, that's where the riffs are at. Look at that one. Yes. There's some riffs in that one. Oh yeah, it's it's funny because uh, we uh, Taylor, we had that in common. Like I'm not I'm not into thrash at all. Me neither. Um, I, man. I tried. I tried. I literally sat there and tried to like listen like to Slayer and stuff. Or I see never got into that either. I'm just not like it's not it's not my thing. But if, if this Metallica record I put on, it's always a black album, all the time. Yeah. That that record is just fucking phenomenal, dude. Yeah. It's timeless. Yeah, timeless. Yeah. It's funny. Uh, that that really explains why that band's so massive. You could have they have it's so many kinds of fans. It's generational fans, which is crazy. Because yeah. I feel like each. Like record, there's like a different dem like like a different like time demographic of fan that they create. You know what I mean? So like mm -hmm. you just have like these like huge range of like age like fans that go back yeah. to the first album. It's crazy, especially with like Metall like Metallica being featured in like Stranger Things too. It's like that's just breeding a whole new generation. Yeah, and there's kids that are right. listening to it now for the right. first time, and they're gonna be like, oh. 
Stranger Things right. band. You know what I mean? It's just like Master of Puppets. Yeah, it's just, it's just, it's just like a new record. Yeah, they're just <laughs> straight up. I'm like, whoa! Or even if they love it because it's retro, like finding it through their own means, through their own media that's right. like new, their own niche. They're gonna or cling like, on to it yeah, way harder. Straight up. Yeah. I always think about like when someone hears a band or, or watches like a certain type of movie, uh, like. For like example, it could be like a movie, and it's like it's it's the remake. It's not like the original movie. Yeah. For us, like we have our original version of whatever movie uh, you're watching. But to them, I'm like, I can't hate because that's going to be their first experience, right? With, with, with that kind of movie, and then, then that's their whole life. You yeah, know, right. like I mean, what I mean, what makes my Everyone, yeah. mind so much better? Everyone just has different takeaways from like everything. Enough, right. Nostalgia is a weird shit thing. Too, you know? Very weird. Just get the whole thing mm-hmm. for sure. Yeah, and sometimes you sometimes you might go backwards. You know, yeah. and then oh shit, this is some dope shit. I remember uh, I heard Corn's Follow the Leader. That was the first record Fuck. I I heard. And then you go backwards, you're like, oh my god, dude, Corn is so fucking good. Mine was Issues. Damn. Yep. <sighs> Technically, the first one I think I got introduced to might have been Follow the Leader. Mine was Follow but the like leader. the first one I ever bought was the self titled, and yeah. it was just. Issues might yeah, be one of my favorites, though. Yeah, it's yeah, like yeah, it's yeah, such a hard toss-up for me between Fall of the Litter and Issues. And the, both those records, literally from front to back, are so good. I feel oh, like yeah. coming from undone, front to back. I, the music video was on MTV and in the morning. Damn, and like I was like in damn, fifth grade or damn, some shit dude, like that, and I feel like that was my introduction to Corn. I love how much everybody in this band loves Corn. <laughs> <laughs> We're just always jam, dude. Always jamming Corn, dude. You guys don't even have to say anything, or I don't. I don't even have to hear your band. I just feel it from your bodies. Yeah, how much you guys <laughs> we radiate <laughs> Corn oh, energy. That, the, whole, <laughs> the whole flop thing. If you yeah, just watch dude. the Corn Woodstock '99 set, you'll get it. Dude, that shit yeah. gives yeah. you goosebumps dude, every time you watch Corn. You're, you're like, it's like, win it, in it, dude. That yes, fucking we're just dude. you see like the fireworks and shit going dude, up. Goosebumps dude. every time, get man. Get it in it, dude. Fuck. It's just yep. so good. Imagine I've always I've always thinking about like Are you ready to get in and, and they were headbanging so hard. So hard They're dude. like damn they with their bodies. Dude, on the just ground, getting bro. it, dude. When there's <laughs> hella people and like the wave <laughs> of people the jumping was just nuts. crazy. I was like, dude. Literally an yeah, ocean of metal heads. Just, just so people metal. literally like was, you couldn't yeah. even see the end of it, dude. It was just <sighs> I think that was, that was the sensation. moment that really like Define like oh this is like this is like that I mean Corn's first record or that song that video there yeah that it really built up to that moment yeah and then that now I mean they're they're Corn for life bro you know Damn right. they're legends what? for sure <laughs> dude literally we talked about this the other day and we were like yo whenever time travel like comes to be like a real thing mm-hmm. that's the first place I'm going what's that is we're going to Woodstock oh, 99 gonna, to watch that corn that, and the Limp Biscuit set we're gonna, we're gonna, gonna watch we're gonna both of them we're gonna hit up a couple old Ozfest yeah but, too, but we sure. said but we said that's the first motherfucking place that we're going is we're going back to Woodstock to watch corn yeah. and we're gonna bring her on water too <laughs> yes. Yes. we're gonna pack Good it up call. and we're gonna be chilling <laughs> and nice well we're only gonna be there until it gets bad, and then we're gonna bounce. You know what I mean? Yeah, we I, just gotta feel the energy for a minute, and then we're out. Stick around for if you could time travel then. with the van, that'd be sick, bro. Like, Dude, just, just like drops like, right in the middle of everybody. Oh, oh my god, that would suck. Maybe not bad. They're like, <laughs> I don't know why that's what popped into my head. That's so awful. So you guys want to time travel? That's fun. <laughs> Fuck! <laughs> One too many horror movies. Yeah, dude, I have Final Destination is just ingrained in my fucking memory, dude. Oh my goodness, dude. <laughs> Straight up, though, every time I'm behind a log truck, Final you Destination so? 3, Dead bro. Ass, like, dude, it's just like, I'm going to die always. here today, dude. Yeah. Sorry. That was a completely different tangent. tangent. Uh, <laughs> hey, it's, it's all it's all. But good. corn, for real, that's uh, where we yeah. would go back. <laughs> yep. Same. That's, that's so a great know, moment. Yeah. yeah. Any of those old, like, Ozfests. Would would be great to see too, because exactly. I mean, yeah, just like the video. If you if you feel that way watching just a video, you're like, I man, in person, imagine you could you couldn't you literally can't even fathom it. You can't you yeah, can't dude. unless no. you were there. Like that's just uh, that's How, why I would time travel back to it. Did you? Uh, I, I'm not planning to get into this, but we'll we'll make we'll make it quick. But what was all your first shows, and did you have a cell phone yet? <sighs> First show, <laughs> my so, first like yeah. metalcore show I ever went to was like four to day, and uh, upon a burning body, oh. and Memphis Mayfire. That was like the first like metalcore show I ever went to. When I was like fifteen, I think. Did you have a phone yet? 
Yes, I did. Oh, wow. <laughs> so your first show, you had a phone. Yeah. Damn. We're babies, dude. I am. I am. <laughs> and me and him I are am both the baby the Yeah, I mean, he's like only a couple months younger than me, but it's still just like, like, I think my first show, I had like at least a Nokia. Like the, oh, yeah. you, you had a phone your, during, during your first show. Yeah, but I don't think it was like it wasn't like one of the good phones by any means because I was wow. definitely I think literally like the, one of the first shows I went to was like a local show with my brother and it was like Attila and oh my god like Doctor Acula and like mm. uh, volumes and something like that. But Attila was like a local opener, and it was like two thousand and like what I was like in eighth grade. Like I can't remember how old. How long ago that was, but it had to be like 2009 ago. or something like it that. It was forever ago. 2009. You serious? Something like that, yeah. I was mad young, dude. We, dude, we were already on tour by it. Yeah. Wow. That's fucking so crazy. You're legends, dude. I, I, is, that, is that a way of saying you're old? No, you're just, <laughs> you're just legends. <laughs> you've just been hitting the fucking ground running for a minute, dude. It's like you're a legend. <laughs> <laughs> you guys are old oh, legends, yeah. dude. <laughs> <laughs> nah, oh, my dude. goodness, dude. Because, like, oh, so how old were you when you started touring, though? Uh... 1920. That's, that's, that's young. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, that's like, I feel like that's fairly young to start touring, like, for yeah, real, for real. It is. You know what I mean? So, like, I mean, that's like. Yeah. Out there revolutionizing got, the world as a kid. You got, yeah, like, you got yeah. a fucking, you got a little head start, too. I was just, I'm just younger than you, you know what I mean? Wow. Imagine seeing Corn in 99 in their prime with no <laughs> cell phone being a 12 year old kid. Dude, could, my, my first I don't show think was, my 12 year old mind could dude, like handle my, it. My to be first honest show with you. was Corn. It was a Family Values tour. It nice. was 2004, I Fuck. think. It was Corn, Deftones, Hell Yeah, and Dire and Gray. Oh, yeah. I think. And I don't think I had a phone yet. I think it Sick. was like regular for people to have phones. I don't know if I had one, though. I don't think so at the time. Damn. Yeah. I was like 13, 14, something like that. So I was born in 92. So, no, wait, 12, 12, 13. Yeah. Holy shit. Born in 92. Mm-hmm. Are you guys even old enough to cuss? Oh, shit. Are you guys? <laughs> okay, oh, we started out too. I couldn't help like it. There, <laughs> my there, mom would there's be There's an old so jab. Like, oh, yeah, good. Yeah, young no. jab. It's okay. Yeah, take him, dude. We're good. We can take him on the chin, dude. It's all good. <laughs> oh, my goodness, dude. I'm trying but, yeah. to think my first show. It was, it was like a couple where it's like Kiss was my, like my first like concert I ever went to. Right. Um, I was in... My first concert was something different, but I just went like my first like metal show. Right. I said my first like metal, like... It was Warped Tour 2011, but the first, like, metal show I went to was, like, I guess, like, not, like, a festival kind of thing was All Shaw Parish, Carnifex. Um, there was a couple other bands on the lineup, too. I can't remember off the top of my head, but The Contortionist was also playing. It was back when they were, like, a deathcore band. Damn. Holy, holy moly. Man, I hate the old vocalist from All Shaw Parish, dude. Me, too. <laughs> <laughs> Trust me, That me guy too. is the worst. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Singers, bass players, I hate him. God. <laughs> are, are you are you lazy? Me? Yeah. I can't be. <laughs> I'm pissed already. <laughs> <laughs> it's bringing up traumatic mem- memories. <laughs> oh my goodness. Oh, it's funny. Uh, I learned that that the older you you get, the more you guys is Bush tried his balls. You know, I, I, I can say anything and they, they know I'm, I'm just right. fucking yeah, around. For sure. and, and, and vice versa. Yeah. You know? Exactly. So yeah, fuck Eddie and fuck Dan Canyon, dude. <laughs> <laughs> My goodness. We it's, bust it's, each other's balls all the time, too, so it's cool. It's a constant. It's definitely like it's a constant thing. Sometimes I feel like it's, it's just being in a band, though. Sometimes yeah, it's yes. literally. Or like being around each other for long enough. You know what I mean? We scream, I'll kill you to uh, each other. All the time. Oh, yeah. I'll kill you. <laughs> Do you know that I could kill you? Yeah. I could kill you with two moves. <laughs> two. I, could kill, I could kill you in one. <laughs> Let's fucking find out. Motherfucker. Th- and it's a great idea. After these 10 shots, it's a great idea to start fighting. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> What what's really special about what you guys are doing, uh, very sim- similar to us, is like you, you guys share like the writing credit. You know, yeah. a, a lot of bands don't do that. Yeah. But uh, I think it's know. egos, dude. Just being honest. Yes. I'm just gonna be completely flat out honest. I think a lot of people just get very egotistical when it comes to writing, and they want to just like, oh, this is all me. You know what I mean? When totally. they don't make it like a group effort thing. Totally. Yeah. Yeah, I, I feel the same way, and uh, you know, obviously, I, I can't predict the future. What what what's gonna happen with with you guys and your band but for us like we went through like multiple lows and there's something to be said when you 
bring everybody in and on all facets yeah. they they grow through the, like the low with you yeah you know for oh, sure money's gone oh it's fine we, i mean we're a fucking you unit. build character we're, bro yeah we're, we're, yeah we're a fucking unit and like those those little decisions you made when we were kids turned out to really fucking benefit us yep you know yep. they're just no matter what uh we have each other's backs and and you got you guys are doing the uh, same thing you know that cool. ass, dude. Yeah. I mean, I think that everything works better when you have more gears in the system. You know what I mean? Totally. It just works. Things just get done faster and more efficiently, you know? Absolutely. Yeah. And you guys are building your your friendship, your brotherhood, a lifelong brotherhood, and like inside of a fucking storage unit, you know? Yeah. Right? That ass. Literally yeah. a storage Literally unit. Literally a storage yeah. unit. Yeah. 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 Started, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Do you guys really write in a storage unit? We no, did. We used to. Not anymore. Yeah. Yeah. Not anymore. But yeah, we. But it was literally like the smallest thing ever, mm-hmm. in a storage unit. And like there was, like another indie band that had another one and the thing, and they they Whoa. used to get mad at us because we would practice at the same time. <laughs> and, and we were just, just, way, and we were just loud. way louder than us. <laughs> 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 yeah. Like crank it up. I don't give a shit. <laughs> so funny. Man, out there, storage units must be a lot different because I can't. Because we have a, a, a unit, I'm like, I we can't practice in there. I mean, we made it work. I mean, it literally was probably the size of this room, maybe like slightly longer. Yeah. Right? A little bit longer, yeah. Maybe a sure. little bit longer, but not by much, though. No. no and it, it literally was like about the size of this. We would have the drum kit right here, and then we just surrounded the cabs mm. and stuff around pointing in at each other. Oh, my goodness. And I mean, it was just a box of noise we had like power coming from the hallway at some point yeah, yeah. i mean to be fair we outgrew it that's why we're not there anymore. yeah we did <laughs> also look around for a long time to find a place that wasn't like having issues with like the noise ordinance and stuff like sure. that as well mm-hmm. yeah and then we found this one place that happened to be band friendly yeah was the ones because it was a yeah. decent amount of bands there we met people right. that were practicing on almost every on, floor on, yeah yeah there was that do you remember that old lady that said her son was the drummer of a? Uh, what was the band, dude? Man, I remember the whole remember? instance, but I don't remember the band. Dude, dude. it was some, like, legendary band, though. I can't dude, remember. I can't oh, remember. that's so He just annoying. plays here all the time. <laughs> yeah, he was like, he just yeah. has a storage unit here, and he just comes here and plays drums. Dude, I can't remember. What the fuck, dude? Dude, I can't it remember. Was so Why did so we smoke ago. that? <laughs> you did this no, to I can't think of anything. <laughs> We'll get back to you. Yeah, yeah. one day. It but was yeah. some big band. Like it was a. It was like yeah. she said it, and I was like, "Wait, what? Hold on, what? <laughs> I can't remember who. Why was are you though. here? There literally yeah. was a bat in that storage unit one time. A oh little yeah, baby bat. That was interesting. That probably sounded like shit, huh? Is the jam in a storage unit. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, it was. It you was couldn't bad. tell what was going on. Bro, at the it was time, just like, <laughs> at the time <laughs> though, for just like what we were doing, we were just kind of. Out of figuring it the Dude, fuck we out practiced to open up for a mirror in that motherfucker, bro. We, <laughs> <laughs> we literally practiced to open up for a wage war. It was wage war in a mirror, right? And stick to your guns. And stick to your guns, yeah. Mm-hmm. We, we opened that show, dude, and we practiced in that storage. We and I'm pretty sure we didn't. I have just no for idea. now in like three days and practice it with like two and a half weeks. No tracks. Notice. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we were just straight raw on it, dude. No tracks. It was tight. Holy shit. It was so it was, old school. It, was, it still worked very well for the time. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, it was yeah. relatively yeah. tight. Yeah. <laughs> Given a lot of other circumstances. It's like, man, we, we sound like shit right now. Yeah. It's but, just because it's bouncing in thousands of directions. Dude, I, can't, I can't imagine riding in a storage unit. I really can't because you... I, we you, got it done. Somehow. I don't know how we did it, but man, we definitely cool. got it done. I was using that in my laptop with a Reaper. Yeah. With like, and that no, laptop was... <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh my goodness, dude! Yeah, dude. Well, well, so you guys are out of that storage unit. Congrats! Oh yeah, yeah. It's, fu- it's fucking bigger badass. and better things That's now, crazy. dude. Yeah. Now we're sitting here with you. It's crazy how fast right? time flies, huh? <laughs> Boom! It's nuts, huh? Facts, honestly. Honestly, it, yeah. It's like insane. to even actually put that into perspective was kind of fucking wild. Yeah. <laughs> like holy shit, we were practicing in a storage unit, and I'm sitting here now. Yeah. That's yeah. cool. Yeah, you guys have gotten a lot done in a, a, a short amount of time. Yeah, our team rocks, bro. Like, we have, like, I'm cr- not discrediting any of our work ethics because we bust our ass all the time. But we also have, like, our manager, Jeff, like, bust his ass, bro. And has, like, put us in a lot of, like, good situations and, like, helped grow and mold our ideas into, like, getting things, like, bigger and, like, marketing ourselves the right way and stuff. And I feel like mm. with everything combined, it's just been such of like, 
adrenaline shot of shit that like has happened over the past what three years now. Oh yeah. Has just been like it's been like blindingly fast. <laughs> like we've just yeah. been like, whoa, okay, we're on this tour. Oh my god, okay, now we're writing, now we're writing this, and now we're on this tour. You know what I mean? It's just been so fast, but it's cool. We're just always grinding. We get home, and it's, we're gonna immediately, you know, probably sleep for three or four days, and then we're gonna start thinking about what's going on. Like after that, sick. I thought I thought you were gonna say three to four hours. <laughs> and that's it. Uh, I, too, I'm gonna be honest with you, man. That's like, like I, one night cycle. I, I mean, good. I definitely need. I definitely need First a little time, bit more than a days. couple hours of sleep for maybe sure like to recover. Thirty to forty hours. Definitely, probably not three or four days. I'd say maybe a day, and then I probably because sure. like I'll probably think that I want to sleep for three days, and then my body's not gonna let me sleep for three days. But right. Right. yeah, be ready to go again. But just like, yeah. take it easy or just chill. You yeah, know? you just vibe out for like a day or two. But you know, after that, we're plotting our next move. Yep. You know, it seems like. Uh, Cause you put out your first stuff in 2020, and, and and your timeline is interesting. Yeah. Because obviously you had, so now you have this band, and then obviously like like the pandemic happens, and every few months you're you're releasing music. You have a record, then a live record, and a few months later you have like a, a EP, and a few months it's like it was like this. Was that like done on purpose? So, <laughs> I mean, it was. Everything wasn't actually done like that on purpose. I mean, it is now. I mean, it was done on purpose, but, like, we had to, like, we work at a very quick pace. Yeah. So it's like we have something done. We plan for that to get done. But we're as we're planning for that to get done, we're already working on the next two or three things. Yeah. Simultaneously. So it's like as we're rolling something out, we're already getting another, like, thing mixed and mastered to put out a couple months after that. So like we're we're never endingly churning out music and content because we're yeah. just like <clears throat> working on two to three things at the same time. It's, it's always. very rare that we don't have a decent amount of songs just kind of yeah. like ready yeah. to go. Because I mean, like we all live so close to each other. Yeah, yeah. getting together to write music is just is Easy. a pretty regular thing yeah. for us. So it's yeah. just something that we literally do when we're just at home and we're yeah. just chilling and we write music together and we just. You know, sometimes we will make it a statement like, okay, now we have to write this amount of songs for this amount of stuff. But there's so many times to where just like, y'all want to come over? And then we just fucking do the damn thing. Shit, right. Have my what, phone Where'd you go, Jacob? Still going off. Professional. So <laughs> professional. So how, how far is your... So what are you guys practicing at? Do you guys like play in like, in like a room and start jamming? And what's... Well, right now we've been practicing, or I mean, riding on like some gear that I acquired from over the years. I got a Mac and an Apollo, and we kind of do a lot of demos on there. Cool. Yeah. And take them to wherever we go to get them produced and mixed and mastered and stuff like that. But okay. as far as like just the base ideas that we come up with. Yeah. But I mean, like, even for this last album, we just we decided to, like, since Jacob lives in the woods, we just grabbed all my gear and we went out to Jacob's house and we just like, there literally secluded music. ourselves for like mm -hmm. a week. Yeah. And just like vibed out and just chilled and made made some made some a little songs. record. <laughs> yeah, I smoked a lot of weed. Oh, oh yeah, so much weed. <laughs> a, lot, a very good bit. Yeah, it's 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 fucking cool, man. It's sick. So I you, love it. Yeah, you guys are. Yeah, I mean that's a very like nat it sounds like it's natural. For you guys, right? It's uh, natural now. Yeah, I was like, gonna say like, I, I the think first that, uh, Jeff had a lot to do with like kind of setting the pace because for when sure. we were first starting, we already had uh, two or three songs, and then uh, we had Burden we, and Lost at Last, I think. Because I, I know we showed Jeff the Lost at Last music video, and that was the first I I had met Jeff. Was at that point. and uh, just for now was already we had that. Then, yeah, so. we had that written right. Yeah, and so. We had those, and he was, like, very, like, down with it and everything, but was like, you know, we could be pushing the pace and doing more, and we're like, whoa. Like, like he, was, he was very quick to let us like know doing what we were it. doing and wrong. And, yeah, like, right. you, could, you could be doing more and, like, having more. I feel like it's because he like, saw potential in us. Right. And he was like, I know I can make these guys, like, do what it is they want to do, and he's just kind of been drill sergeant us. No. Since like day one, just we definitely like, needed it. Well, oh, yeah, dude, yeah. It, we, of course. we're like Absolutely. kick it in go mode, and then now it's just kind of became a thing. Yeah, yeah. Like, it's given it's us just, yeah, a definitely. lot of direction. It's mm -hmm. gotten That's us great. to where we are for sure. How did you guys meet e. Jeff? Um, I actually met him. Uh, I used to work. Well, used to like kind of currently work at the masquerade, doing like security and stuff or whatever. Mm -hmm. And uh, he was the marketing guy for like for all of the shows going on at the masquerade in Atlanta. And so I kind of met him, like, 
through that. Never really was like close to him or anything. Yeah. But um, I like randomly hit him up because we had done the Burden music video and we were just kind of like, I don't know, we were like trying to figure out like how to like put it out the right way because we were all just like it was the first time we all like wrote together. And so, like, all of, like, our previous stuff that they wrote without us being in the band sounded so much, so, so different. You know what I mean? So we were mm-hmm. like, okay, well, let's do this the right way. And so, like, I hit up Jeff, and then he ended up being like, oh, okay, cool, like, let's talk or whatever. And then me and him, right? That was me and you that went to that that yeah. thing or whatever. And then we talked to him, and then we all met up after that at, like, a Grindhouse Burger. Mm-hmm. And then he, he was like, yo, you guys need to rebrand. And because we were technically a different band, yeah, at that yeah. point, we were, yeah, called, we were called Lost at Last. Okay, that's and where that song we were, comes from. We were like writing music for it. just like a, like a different vibe, like we yeah. were really for sure trying to hit the mark that we tried to hit with this. But yeah, he pretty much just like cut it to a straight. He was like, Yo, change your name and let's hit the ground running. And then, like, honestly, since that day, I don't think like we look back. Nope, damn, yeah, it was just like a, there's a button was pushed and it was just like, poof, it was like, We're out. Yeah, everything looks very, like, well put together. Trying our best, you know. It's very, Like I said, it's chaotic because it's like things are just constantly happening all the time. But mm-hmm. I feel like, I mean, we're dealing with it, you know, as best as we can for sure. Yeah, you, you want to stay busy. Yeah. You know. I don't ever want to be bored. No. And it's sick because over the years, like, we've built a very close relationship with Jeff, too. And yeah. It's like. Mm-hmm. He's like a member of the band. He's like a homie. He's definitely like, like the sixth member. Yeah, yeah like for that, sure. Like that man's in the paperwork. Like he's with us for the, for the long haul. Yeah, it's cool. Yeah, it's awesome. Um, yeah, I was gonna say something, but I'm like, should, should I say that? Always, uh, always watch your money. Oh, for yeah, sure. Always. Yeah, because I mean, he does our money anyways. Mm-hmm. Good. So he we we got a we got an eye on that regardless. But so, no, Jeff absolutely. has actually been. I, that dude was financially. I was gonna with, say like, that dude's put actually put albums. money into the band. Yeah, great. Because like himself, and literally, then like he's yeah. an investor, literally, yeah. like not just yeah. his money, but his time too. Because like, so everybody much. says the same thing. They're like, "Oh, manager, da 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 da." They get that like prototypical like mm-hmm. managers who take like you know x amount of percent Absolutely. of all your shit. Mm-hmm. It's like trying not to at all. And I, what and I feel does. like <laughs> I feel like, like before we had even met Jeff, I was just like investing in like the completely wrong areas. Yeah, and then as soon as we met him. It, that was like one of the big things of just like he told us like this is where you need to be putting it and like mm. those kinds of things too. So that's great. Yeah, yeah. it's mm-hmm. fucking badass. Oh yeah, it's pretty pretty cool. Honestly, we got a definitely a little little diamond in the rough with absolutely with that guy for sure. We're we're, we're really happy that he saw some potential in us for yeah. sure. He was a hidden gem and we went in and mined him. He out. wasn't we hidden for a while. <laughs> Whenever he was fucking doing all the sworn in shit he and stuff, la- he was on top of the world. Because he was, after that. He was, like a he was the manager of Sworn In and Youth Forever mm-hmm. okay. and a bunch of other like those like you know that little weird wave of like those metalcore bands that came out with like when the death card dropped for Sworn In and stuff. But yeah. He was like managing a lot of those bands, like Barrier and Oh whatever. sick. Yeah. You need uh yeah, you need a manager. You need some kind of like out- it's very nice to have like a outside perspective because because you, you're so like close in it it's right just, it doesn't have like hey you guys you guys should uh you know try this or take not, a or step not, back or not or not do this say no to this say yes to this it's, it's very it's yeah. very helpful yeah for sure one one thing that is impressed me about your band is that there's especially like over like like the pandemic was there was two mindsets mm-hmm. uh two things I, i've heard for from my band i was like oh this is this didn't happen because of pandemic but it seems like with bands like you guys, you you, you took advantage of it, yeah, and use it as like like a, in a weird way, like like a strength, and you're well, just you're just putting out music. Everyone's home, dude. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. what are you gonna do? Like, you're just gonna you're gonna sit at home too. And you know at what the mean? time, we all lived within like thirty minutes of each other. And <laughs> so we were still like, getting together I, I when the regardless. So far away, yeah. yeah, they were just like when they were like, "Yo, you can't be together." We were like, "Fuck you." I mean, <laughs> oh, yeah, carefully, we were doing the tests and stuff, but we yeah. found our way. But we, we found did our it. way to yeah. get it ha- to make it happen. Yeah. yeah. And it's just like, you know, and that's why, you know, like, I mean, even Jeff, like I said, to bring him up again, he brought it up, like, at the very beginning of the pandemic, he was like, there's going to be two things that happen, is there's going to be these bands who are, like, I guess you can see where we're at right now, like, some opening bands, that be at bands that are regional that are, like, you know, able to go on, like, bigger tours and, like, open for bigger tours that are, like, growing, right? Mm-hmm. And then there's going to be the bands that were already there that don't do anything, and then they fall out of that category. Wow. So we were like a smaller band and we busted our ass. What was that? You all right? My phone, yeah. 
the phone. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I was just like, dude, what that the sounded hell? like a body, bro. Yeah. Yeah. I was like, why yeah, was that so loud? loud. It made so oh, much shit. noise. I was yeah. Like, oh, okay. But uh, <laughs> yeah, so like you know, it's just like you just had to grind it out throughout you know the the pandemic or whatever, and then you're gonna come out of it like at a way different thing. And TikTok helped a lot in that yeah. aspect. So mm-hmm. honestly. We had, like, you know, two different songs go viral on TikTok, and it was, like, a whole different aspect coming out of the pandemic. It was just, like, a, it felt like we were just, like, leveled up so hard. Mm-hmm. It was just wild. Whoa. Yeah. We're, like, go, like, go back out on tour or whatever, and there's people coming in, and they're, like, screaming our lyrics and shit out of nowhere, and I was just, like, when did that happen? You know what I mean? Like, yeah. we've just been sitting at home, you know what I mean? Like, fucking Whoa. whatever, and then it's just, it's just honestly super cool. Feel. Yeah, it, yeah. It was so cool, like. The first show when we played, like, right when... Or oh, Headliner? Came back. Yeah. It was, like, we've always had, like, a good buzz at, like, all the shows we played bef- before, right before the pandemic. Did we sell that show out in, like, a week and a half? Yeah. It was also the first heavy show in Atlanta. Yeah. Right when everything opened back up, we did a Headliner. Yeah. And we sold it out in a week and a half. It was, like, a 350 cap room. Whoa. Yeah. yeah. That's and a big deal, man. It was And that was fucked. our first that Headliner was our, ever. That was our first Headliner ever. Yeah, and, and we were, had only been a band for what, like a year and a half, two years no. at that point. Yeah, yeah. like yeah, like that, yeah. that, like like barely, like, and that's what I'm saying. The pandemic literally what? made us that much bigger. And that was also my first show with the band, right? Yeah, yeah that was yeah. your first show, and uh, and yeah, dude, we played that show, and I still go back to like the videos of that stuff, where like like every single person in the crowd is just like every word. It's crazy. That is yeah, insane. That is it was mind blowing, dude. Yeah, yeah, it's crazy. I remember we played like Loathe and Anger. And anger. Both both times, like we like we got like the main lines of Jacob. the song. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's not. It, every time I pick it up, it's not going saying anything. So I don't think it's mine. Yeah, I'll turn it off. Yeah, oh, you're fine. But like I was like getting goosebumps on stage, just like watching, like seeing everybody yelling words, people like stage diving, crowd surfing when. That's so cool. Yeah, it was like honestly like one of the turning points I feel like in in all of us where it was like oh shit like we, we can we, actually like do this shit like holy crap this we is crazy. And we realized it, we had the hometown yeah, support for it, sure. For sure. It was crazy too. Is like even like a week or two later we went on like a four day run with Lorna Shore, also another band that just blew up like yeah. at, during the pandemic and like there were still like a plenty of people at these shows too. They're just were coming like, out knowing what the fuck who the fuck we were. And stuff yeah, it was just like it was just like whoa like. So yeah. we really did feel like we did grow exponentially. Overnight. Yeah. I mean, wait, think about it. What that was? What two years of uh, you guys just grinding and put, uh, putting out EPs, singles, a record, a live record. I mean, yeah. yeah. And then boom, first first Halloween show. That that's a fucking big deal, man. Wild, dude. Yeah. I mean, it's it's kind of just like weird to think about, but I mean, it's very. Yeah, very cool. Feels good. <laughs> we feel the love. Yeah, mm-hmm. very fucking cool. Absolutely. We love being from Atlanta for sure. Yeah, how, like, like, what's it like for you guys to be from from there? It's pretty cool. Yeah, man, yeah. Like, it, I feel like the the, the music vibe is very is, high. Is the players sure. play. Stuff, they you know ride know with them things like every, every day. day yeah. You know, there's always shit happening. It's, it's, yeah, it's fun. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Atlanta's so, a vibe, dude. It's like I feel it like is. everybody. Yeah, I feel like everybody just kind of like whenever the, the shows happen, it's just like a party. Yeah, it's true. Just yeah. everybody's out there, just fucking having a good time. That that block there for the masquerade. How how's that area? Oh, the underground. No, I mean like a like like around the venue. Some of it's kind of fucking shot. To be honest with you, there's a lot of like homeless and like a lot of like that stuff that goes on down there, but yeah. like. I don't think it's necessarily like a really bad area. Okay. It's just a lot of homeless. Like a lot of like really like uh I don't know, just like those people who are just like laying on the sidewalk and stuff. Okay. Yeah. Cuz uh I'll I'll go walk into that. You guys know that Chinese food place right there and yeah. then there's like like a, like a subway across from yeah. from that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Every every time I walk there I'm like kind of Watch, yeah, wash my back a little no, bit. No, I feel you. I don't think it's really it's it's not necessarily that bad. Okay, there's just like it's hard to tell with Atlanta because you can literally walk a block and be in a completely different area. Really? Yeah, like you can like walk one block and it's like oh everything's chilling, and then you take like one wrong turn and you're like, this oh, road's fucked. This street's kind of intense. <laughs> Holy shit! Yeah, it's yeah. very weird. It's it's literally <laughs> yeah. block to block basis yeah. for sure. Damn. Yeah, but like in and around that area, especially now, I don't. I mean. I mean, there's some bad people everywhere. You know what I mean? Of course. But, of course. Yeah, you don't, you don't have also, problems. 
but I definitely also one don't of those have cities like, too where it's like even like the areas that look run down are not actually bad. Yeah, it's not. Uh, and then there's also bad. nice areas too where it's like you actually have to watch yourself. Like, yeah, straight up, your <laughs> target. Yeah. Holy shit! So you got, we got you guys. We got Seven Dust. Yeah. What what a fucking beautiful town, man. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Norma Jean. <laughs> oh yeah, huh? Norma Jean, yeah. Chariot. Chariot. Yeah. Have you met any of the Seven Dust guys? <sighs> no. No, not yet. Actually, no. if you haven't. I don't think so. I haven't, no. Wait, I think some, somebody met the guitarist at a gas station one time. Nice. Who was it? Was it either Clint or John? No, it wasn't me. I just remember some, somebody. I think it was Levi. Front. I really feel like that was Levi before yeah. a practice one day. Uh, yeah, I think it was like, Levi. Okay. Our old drummer. Yeah. Yeah. What, uh, what happened to a Levi? He ended up, uh, he was a tattoo artist. Okay. And he just obviously is making so much more fucking money doing that. So he uh, yeah. he he just had his priorities somewhere else. And honestly, like that dude's crushing it now. He's, so. a, he's an amazing tattoo yeah. artist. Yeah, he's a boss. Nice. He's the, he was doing. I was he was doing that. He literally I has like I have yeah. so many pieces of him on yeah. both of us. Oh, yes, yeah, yeah, I put on him. I, 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 I have like four tattoos. tattoos so many. I would you know. say he gave me my first. Tattoo. I would say fifty yeah. percent of my tattoos are from Levi. I'd okay. say probably a good uh, close to like 30, 40% of mine are from yeah. Levi. Yeah. You go way back. You guys might be more new metal than me. You guys have new metal tattoos, huh? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah three of us have I actually this w- hand, this hand piece literally got done on the first tour that we did in a, in a fucking kitchen. <laughs> yeah. In a kitchen. After in a kitchen. A show. After a show. Like in, no- in Knoxville? Mm-hmm. Nashville? Uh, I think it was Knoxville. Nashville. No. Yeah, maybe. I don't know. Whatever the fuck. <laughs> we played in Nashville, with, and it was on like a routing date, and we pulled up to like party with these people after the set or whatever, and he was just like, yeah, dude, I'll tattoo your hand. Busted nice. It out. It's nice. It's nice. It's I love it, dude. What are, what are some of the uh, band tattoos? <sighs> the I got band a tattoo Deftones. There you go. I was going to say, I have a Deftones one, yeah. The White Pony. I have my own band tattooed on me. Yeah, there you go. Have, <laughs> we have a commemorative tattoo. Oh, yeah. Actually, yeah, yeah, we all have There it. you go. Me, Taylor, and Peter all have like, the Deftones one, and then uh, all five of us have like the Let the Suffer Snake logo. That's yeah. cool. And, you have and then you have the Wormwood thing Oh, yeah, on you. Can't do Strain worm, Wormwood. Uh, oh, my goodness. Yeah. And this is also a Levi tattoo. Like, he crushed it. Yeah. You love a case you strain. Oh, yeah. Oh, that, okay. was like, that was like the band that I sent me over into. Like, I was like, really getting into heavy music, and then I discovered that album. I'm like, Wormwood, yeah. yeah. this is what I want to do. Yeah. Wow. Make heavy music, yeah. That's right. that, that, that's interesting because that's one of their like later records. It's crazy. Yeah, it's like it was like 2010, I think. Like, because it was it, yeah, it was I, Continent I, and then that that one, correct? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I, I enjoy Continent a lot too, yeah. but that's yeah, fucking heavy. Facts. Heavy, dude. Oh, Watching that shit live was face. fucked. Yeah, we opened up oh, for yeah? the continent uh, across <laughs> the, the rare form across the continent yeah. tour. Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh. Yes. We did the we did the Atlanta date for that, and it was fucking cool. Watching like ATB play rare form, and then like Acacia Strain play Continent like right after. It right. was fucking it was sick. Insane. That's pretty sick. Yeah. Uh, that crowd was brutal. It was, it was so fun. Yeah. 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 We walked out. They started cheering. We're like, I don't even know where. Yeah, we're I don't even know yeah. the hell we are. <laughs> yeah. Facts, dude. <laughs> We, we didn't play with tracks then either, did we? Nope. Oh, oh man. man, that makes me feel yeah. so uh, weird. We were still wrong. There's no backtracks. No backtracks so makes my skin bro. crawl. There's <laughs> all, really? out the, I remember out of the whole set list, too, we had played Burden at one point in the set, and then all of it was old stuff we scrapped when we changed yeah. into a lot to suffer. Yeah, that's fucking hilarious. Yeah. How'd you guys meet each other? <sighs> we through the local scene. Yeah. You know I mean? The first day I met y'all. Was I got when I got out of jail? Yeah, what? And I, I, <laughs> we were. That is such a, a ha- funny fucking story. We dude. were playing a house show in a literal cul-de-sac with I want to say rain and boundaries. And God of nothing and God of nothing. Yeah, boundaries didn't show up, so it was just rain and God of nothing. An apothecary. An apothecary. Yeah. yeah, yeah, and like me and Jacob, our old band from the local scene, was also playing the show. And this man shows up with a fucking big ass, like the speaker, like the PA that we're like using for the show and shit like that. And in, that a like, in a driveway. In a driveway. In a driveway. In the coldest thing, bro. I still didn't have my laces in my shoes from getting, <laughs> from, from getting out of jail that morning. I literally had no laces in my shoes because they take them out when you get put into jail. Wow. And fucking, I was like disheveled, hadn't showered. I like pass like my friend Brian, who's the vocalist of of that fucking band, like I like got me out of jail and I literally like woke up like at his house. We went to that show and then I met them. <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. yeah. And then, yeah. And then we just met him through fucking. I was playing in an old uh, local band called. <coughs> like, I was playing guitar for them actually, and they they met Peter first, uh, then Taylor. We actually funny thing is is that like the three of us all played a show together in different bands. Yeah. And then somehow I ended up in the same band together. They, I got invited to come to a practice because I was like wanted to try out a different project and. I remember whenever we were there. sitting at that bar in Levi's house. I don't know why I remember that situation oh, so oh, clearly. Yeah. I remember when he posted on Facebook, he was like, I want to do something else, da 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 And it was me and him and our old drummer were living together at the time. And I looked over at him and I was like, yo, dude, like, should we ask him to be our third guitarist? And we had known We had three guitars at the set this time. Yeah, because oh. yeah. Yeah, we already had a bass Because we had a bass yeah. player. And we had known of his other band, and like we had heard, and his other band was tight. It was tight, so we were like, "Fuck yeah!" yeah like, come fucking. We're like, we're the us. next yeah. White Chapel. Why? Yeah. Yeah. Whatever, bro. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. 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 Do it. run it. Fuck. Yeah. yeah. Funny thing was that yeah, so I did get hired into the band as a third guitarist. Mm-hmm. Um, our old bass player left. We're trying to like find a bass player or something like that, and then one day I was just like, I had a really good paycheck from work. I was like, "Fuck it, fucking bought, buy the bass. Bought a bass, <laughs> bought a pedal <laughs> board. I'm a buy And then bought like a cab like a month later. Yeah. Holy shit. I gave, and they gave you pretty that, much yeah. been that the SVT entire route of Atlanta. Christian. Like anytime like he's like got something to get, he he gets, he gets it. it. He, he makes does. it work. Yeah. At the fucking damn wall, wall. Yeah, it's yeah, like all these kind of things that's like happens. Just, I just do it. I don't tell just, anybody. It's just like, hey, you got this. And it's like, Boom. Yeah. yeah. He's like, yeah, I bought a ding wall. It's like thirty five hundred dollars. I was like, Jesus fucking Christ, dude. Like yeah. <laughs> he just bought a small car. That's <laughs> Pretty bigger much. car than I had at the time. Yeah, <laughs> it sounds fucking. And great. then we met Alex. Uh, just he was in another local band uh, or a band from fucking Florida, but he was in Alabama. He was playing drums mm-hmm. for Weeping Wound, yeah. and uh, yeah, then they opened for that band a handful of times. And yeah. then over the pandemic, I wasn't in that band anymore. And then Taylor just called me randomly one day and was like, "Hey." Like, we kind of need a drummer. Like, are you interested? And I was like, yeah, sure. And then I broke my shoulder, like, a week afterward. No. <laughs> yeah. Dude. And, uh, so bad. Uh, I did that long boarding. And then I had surgery. But then, like, a month later, I called him and was like, hey, do you still need a drummer? Like, I still was in a sling. Oh. <laughs> but I was like, I'm going to do it. Yeah. And so then I just started practicing with them, like, a couple yeah. months after that. I was we driving, like, ripping. four hours every week <laughs> to come dude. rehearse. Literally and from like, Alabama to Georgia. Man, yeah. like, <laughs> and he was learning like unreleased music that like yeah. we hadn't put out yet. And yeah, would, like just show like up, mad and, like, quick kill too. the song and be like, it's it was pretty set. Wild. Basically, everybody try to go hard. And yeah, everybody kind of do it. Yeah, yeah. straight up. So you, yeah, you know, four hour drive. Mm, it was like three. Maybe, but like I was doing it like every week. Yeah, I mean, sometimes much. twice a for, week. For like the first yeah. six or so months that I was in the band. It was yeah. a lot. And, and we practiced a decent amount because we were like, you know, like our manager Jeff was telling us, like, you guys are about to tour, like, it's about to happen. Yeah, so like you need yeah. to prep yourself. Hone yeah. in. So we made True. it to sometimes twice a week, usually yeah. once a week or so. But like, I mean, there was some times where we'd get together multiple times just to like right. get new shit and like, right. yeah. Wow. Yep. So where, Alex, where, where do you live now? Uh, Birmingham. <laughs> oh shit! Yeah. So what? Are you still are you still make make me to drive? You flying out? What's yeah, the? I mean, like I'm usually like just like kind of hopping around at like their houses and stuff too, just doing whatever, or like I'll go back home. But like I don't know. Like I feel like it's not that hard. I make it work pretty well because yeah. like we stay pretty busy. So like a lot of times I just go over and like I don't know. We have enough stuff going on to where like I don't even have to think about like going back home or whatever. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, we're, yeah. we're all at each it's other's house true. anyway, so yeah. like staying at each other's house is is a regular thing. Like it's just happens. Yeah. yeah, yeah, and I'm, I'm sure all being your friends is very helpful. Oh you yeah, know, for yeah. sure. Yeah, it definitely does. It definitely helps out a lot. Hey, come over. We all, we all do dabs and mushrooms. Yeah, straight up. Dead ass. <laughs> that's a real fucking That's what thing. happens. That's what yeah. happens. Yeah. Literally. You nailed that shit right on the head, dude. <laughs> oh, my goodness. <laughs> I'm serious. I'm Dead serious. ass. I guess. Oh. Yeah, man. oh, my goodness. So you guys did mushrooms. <laughs> Uh, for a show, yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. When, it was when like was this? it was like two, three weeks ago. Oh my god, Fort Wayne, like, right? like three yeah. weeks ago. Was what yeah, day Fort, was it? You're, yeah, you're right. Fort Wayne. In, Fort, yeah. in Fort Wayne. Oh my god, dude. Yeah. And then, yeah. the, oh my god. Okay, oh hold my, on. Oh Since you god. like story time so much, Let's I'm gonna it. fucking put it on the record, Play dude. Let's do it. It's I'm story put, time. I'm with putting it on the fucking record now, dude. Don't do that. I'm just kidding. No, but seriously, after a whole day, us. 
four, we're all doing. Well, you doing mushrooms all day with us too, right? Sort of. Yeah. I'll, I'll sort of. But mainly, it was mainly me, Peter, and Jacob. We were doing. We like woke up at like nine a.m. I was and then we were the like, most. whatever. We were just <laughs> we were doing mushrooms, dude, and like like it was pretty much an, in an all day event. Like we were like, okay, cool. Like we tripped, like kind of like. I said microdosing, but then Peter was like, "You took an eighth of shrooms." <laughs> yeah, dude. dude. Taylor was just like laying in the back, and he was like, "Dude, I fucking love microdosing shrooms." I'm like, oh, "Bro, dude. you just took a three five, my guy. You are not microdosing." <laughs> <bad, laughs> we so we're so we're like tripping, right? And like fucking, so we we kind of kept this going all day. Then we were like, "All right, fuck it, let's just do it. We'll just keep it rolling through the set." Mm-hmm. And we were like, all right, cool, fuck it. So we took some, did the set. I mean, ripped the set. The, the, the Be set honest with you, the set bro. was lit. Like, <laughs> and, not, dude, before the set, like, there we was didn't a moment fuck up. Like, I watched I, videos. You know yes, what I mean? Like, I, I was did. like, I need to make sure that I wasn't just tripping it, and I we, felt good. We you were know tripping I mean? to the point of whenever I picked my guitar up before the set. <laughs> It felt way fucking different, and I got a little worried. <laughs> but then, as soon as fucking Alec did the first, like, tss, tss, I was like, oh, oh I, I, was like, I played this shit a thousand times, like, yeah. dead, like dead ass. Like I've played this a lot of times. Yeah. I fucking know how to do this. I thing. have really good muscle memory. Yeah. yeah, you know, like I was, you know, I was, you know, thoughts were going everywhere. You know, like the lights look, you know, pretty yeah. Sick. It was so, pretty rad. Yeah. I remember vividly just like how crazy everything <laughs> looked with those lights. And there's yeah. one picture. That someone got on their Instagram, yeah. and I am just like <laughs> looking out into the audience, like looking like I am looking at the eye of God. Just Dude, like, me, I was just hyper, <laughs> I was just hyper focused on everybody's faces, kind of blurring together. Like I was just like doing the whole like looking back and forth in the crowd, and everything was just kind of like, <sighs> and I just would be like, I need to turn around. And I just turn around. I would like turn around and low-key like try to make eye contact with like him. Look at me. And he would just be like, oh. And I would just, I would, I'd have to like bring myself back to earth. And I'm like, all right, I'm on stage. And then I would turn back around. I'm like, all right, yeah, what the fuck's going on? You know what I mean? Like get back into it. I'm chilling. But like there was a couple times it would like get like, you're like, oh, wow, I'm fucked up right now. And I have to center myself real quick. And then you just go right back to it. You know what I mean? It's It's a a special occasion kind of thing. It's kind of cool. We definitely have. Only done it one time. Don't <laughs> get us one. wrong. Yeah. We're not Just out here tripping time. shrooms yeah. at every show. Event, for sure. Definitely not. But maybe next door. Will I do it again? Probably. Maybe yeah. for yeah. sure. Yeah. Yeah. I'll uh, probably do it again at some point. What date will it be? We don't know. We we're gonna roll the motherfucking dice, dude. <laughs> It sounds like you Maybe guys we can go on tour together. You know, uh, and you can watch it for yourself. Yeah, okay, I, would, I would love to see it in person. There you go. You, know? you guys heard it. You, you would know? love to see it in person on tour with us. For yeah. God, man, they're fucking playing like shit right now. <laughs> <laughs> I they don't they don't said that they were good. Yeah, they said they were Did good. they really think this was acceptable? <laughs> <laughs> they're just like, it's on tour. They're like, you're off the tour. Get the fuck out of here. How did, uh, how, how did it sound? Honestly, great. Yeah, yeah like, it, like it, it, felt, it felt good. Like it sounded like yeah, oh, shit, it like it really was good. just like I feel like you just feel like you're more in it. You know what I mean? Like you're just mm. like you just kind of because it's it's all muscle memory. So regardless of the way that you're feeling, your body's still just doing it. Huh. Because like I mean, we're at this point like how far were we into tour? Like I mean, weeks, we're probably like two or three weeks into it already. Two, yeah. So you're already just like I feel like regardless of how fucked up you are, in my opinion, as soon as like. The set starts. I feel like your bo- my body at least just kind of just goes into like you know what I mean. Like I'm not yeah. really like present. You know what I mean. It's just like I'm just like it's just a it's a thing that I do now. You know, huh. like and it's just I feel like it's like muscle memory every time. Yeah. And I I mean I enjoy it for sure. You know, but oh, I feel like shit. just being on shrooms just made the visuals more fucked than anything. Yeah, that would, that would freak me out. That oh, everyone's looking at us. It's weird. <laughs> they won't stop you just looking at us. Them all What's in their on? underwear. Are you just I've... explain all this to me. Like... <laughs> <laughs> That's fucking sick. I've I've done uh, ayahuasca with two cer- ceremonies. I've only microdosed mushrooms like twice. I never really full on had like a mushroom trip. Even like, microdosing's fun though. Yeah, it's like that, a little like chill yeah, vibes, yeah, dude. That's just chill. sick. But I can imagine that being more. And then we'll try to play a riff. <laughs> right. <laughs> and uh, how were your alien. ayahuasca experiences? Oh, uh, great. Yeah. 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 I've heard only good things about ayahuasca. Right. I've heard they're intense, yeah. but like they're very liberating. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Uh, try, I'm trying not to speak too much on it, but uh, oh, for sure. I, I go, you know, a, a lot of people, they, they, they have like what they call like the personal hell or they have like the blissful where everything's like, oh, like, amazing. I love, I love everybody. I had, I had both of those on um, mo- multiple occasions. I go, 
there purposely to like I want I want the personal hell. It's like right. it's like I drove all this weight. I'm doing all this shit. I you want need to see some shit. G- give me get it out. Give me give me right. the shit. Yeah. It's, yeah, and it's funny. It uh, and your I guess every ceremony is different, and uh, we we do like weekend trips. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and uh, the my first trip was I had the personal hell, and then the next day I had the uh, blissful. Oh, and, wow. and I went home and I didn't like it. I'm like, <laughs> it's like, man, I, I wish I just had the personal hell and just went home. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, it's like, yeah. because the blissful is great. I'm not, uh, for me, uh, everyone's different. And I'm not, I'm not telling you to go do it. But, but, but for me, I go there to see, to, to see the hell. I don't need to be reminded uh, that I love my family, I love my friends, and be a good right. person. I kind of, I kind of could do. That's a thing that you know already. I, I could kind of be at home and have like some coffee and like really have to think about that. Yeah. But, but to go deeper, I kind of want the hell. So yeah, to try to dig the demons out for sure. Exactly. I get what you're saying. Exactly. So yeah. when I went like the second time, I, I got lucky. I had like the personal hell right out of the gates. I'm like, all right, I'm out. Yeah. I, I, I'm not, I don't want to stay two more days and I have like the blissful state ruined my right. Your thing that you <laughs> just got through for sure. But some people go because they want the uh, blissful. Is I guess this is what what you want. Yeah. Um, and I think there was like a for some people there's like a rule book. So t- people told me don't leave, don't leave. I'm like, I'm leaving. I don't. <laughs> I don't. I don't like. I don't like rule do books. Do whatever. Bro. You know. There's yeah. any, w- 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 whatever works for you, man. Right. Do you, when you face sure. your demons, at least try to, man. It's like the outcome is is so undeniable. Right. Mm-hmm. You know. You, yeah. you, you come out like a different person. You know. Right, and that's, that's what I find interesting about kind of psychedelic sure. in general. Is yeah. just like you learn lessons and weird, like little totally. things that you may have not known you needed to learn. Yeah. yeah. I felt pretty exactly. cleansed after we fucking did those shrooms and that. When I told you, when I told you that I was that fucking was an intense hotel trip, dude. Yeah. <laughs> we watched oh, Gremlins, dude. That's a fucking movie to watch when you're I tripping. Re- <laughs> I like trip tripped like on like the other second half of because the, there was like two separate types of shrooms that we got, and one of them was like scary looking, and the other <laughs> ones were just like regular shrooms. Like, okay. They looked, looked normal, but like we took like the scary looking ones one night at a hotel. Oh my god! And I just remember like sitting there and looking at Jacob, and I was like, "This is way more intense than I <laughs> originally wanted to do, dude." Like I'm, I'm going through it right just now, sitting on the edge of the bed. Like I was like, <sighs> just like, like breathing yeah. out, just like, oh man, like this is just. Is like, ev- okay, I looked at I looked at you. I was like, "Is this ever gonna go away?" <laughs> It's gonna last forever. I'm fucked. God, you were fuck. literally like, I, did, I just didn't sign up for this. I and did. I was like, you literally did. You literally, did. Did. You literally signed I up. I literally, as a joke, was like, I want to see God. And then fucking, I legit almost fucking saw God. Like, I was just like, oh, this is so fucking intense. Oh, he's fucking handsome. Sick. <laughs> he's so fucking <laughs> handsome. Do you, okay, well, 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 speaking of being on mushrooms and God, do you ever. If, when you're in that state, do you ever think about dying or what or, or, or what or what happens when you die? I've de- I've literally battled this like topic in my head just even when I'm not tripping. Okay. You know what I mean? I feel like it's just like I don't want to believe that it's just black. You know what yeah. I mean? But I also like I feel like there might be something. I just don't know what it is, and I don't mm-hmm. know. Like it's like it's hard for me to like put my finger on it. But I also, you know what I mean? I might just be in denial that it's not just black. You know what I mean? But yeah. I also feel like energy is dispersed and it has to go somewhere. Like, and it's just like, I feel like consciousness just can't evaporate. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I feel the same way. I think, I think you go and I think your energy just, just goes some, somewhere else. Right. I feel know? like, and it's like, I don't think that it's like, there's like a heaven or there's like a hell, mm-hmm. you know, I think that like, that's just like what you make it, you know what I mean? And like your sure. energy just kind of like, it'll just end up wherever it's supposed to end up. I got a I, I got a, a take on hell. I, I want I want your guys' opinions on it. One, I think when you have unresolved issues and you die, I mean I mean, I mean they call it plain English demons. Right. So if you don't handle them, or at least you don't have the you got to pay for it eventually. When, when you go, it's like oh shit, it always fucking comes up, and that could that I could definitely that makes sense to c- me. Kind of fathom like that could be right. a hell. That is something that you've just locked away for so long that and it whenever, comes out. Yeah. yeah, like whenever you almost, finally die, you have to face that. Right. That's actually like fucking. You like I've never relive heard that your before. life, but you're reliving your moments of yes. hell, reliving your demons, reliving yes. Okay, and, that trauma and if you've been cleansed, you. maybe you don't fucking deal with that, and that's what that's yeah. interesting. Yeah, I mean, I kind of believe that hell is like physically what you make it. Like that's literally what I said. Yeah, I was like, hell yeah, is what you make it in this moment because yeah. I've. Yeah. I felt where I felt like I was in hell for with sure. no escape or yes, no answer. Yes. Yeah, like yes. with nothing but just dissolution and like, yeah. mm-hmm. and just despair. Yeah, yes. yeah. and uh, 
We're not there anymore. Though. That ass. <laughs> right before I joined this band, that's where I was at, bro. You yeah. guys know, like, fucking, yeah, it was literally right before I joined this band, this band, like, I, like definitely saved my life, dude. Really? Yeah, for sure. I was, like, homeless. Like, fucking. You were homeless? I was homeless, dude. And, like, I was literally, like, living out of this Jeep that I had. And, uh, like, I mean, I fucking was, like, at an extended stay motel. Like, right when, like, whenever he came and, like, got me or whatever, I was, like, at this chick's house. And he came and picked me up or whatever. And then. I joined the band, and then I moved in with the drummer, and that's what pulled me out of, like, that fucking hole I was in for, like, a year and a half. Unbelievable. Yeah. It was fucked. That's what I'm saying. It's like, this band 100% turned my life around, like, immediately. Like, it was, like, it was literally, like, this, like, like, one day, and the next day my life is different. Yeah, it's like you have, like, purpose, yeah. you know? Yeah. I, I could dir- direct my focus, like, like to this thing. Yeah, and I wasn't yeah. living at an extended stay anymore, anymore, and I had something to focus on. You know what I mean? Like, I had, like, people around me who actually cared about me, mm-hmm. and it wasn't just me. Like, I felt like it was really just, like, me against the world for, like, that year and a half where I was just, Whoa. like, biting it, dude. <laughs> yeah. Damn. It was fucked. <laughs> it was not fun at all, dude. <laughs> but, you know, like I said, hell is what you make it, dude. It is. Right. For sure. Dude, what a trip. They, uh, I've done a little bit of studying with, like, the uh, deathbed literature and uh it's a pretty common thing is like re- regret it's, pr- it's pretty common so we have unsolved things that then i mean that in itself is a a hell yeah right for you know? sure so i try to like you know not if i if i had to say i'm wrong about something if there's a guy got just or do do anything i, I gotta do because i don't want to die with that like oh shit you, you, you right that monkey that. on your back you know what i mean yeah i feel you yeah I, but I do. I didn't know you were homeless. Yeah. Holy shit. That was a fuck situation, dude. I like because I well I like got kicked out of college because I went to go play college football. Yeah. And I got kicked out, and my I mean I'm not like mad at my fucking mom or anything, but like she was just like if you're not going to college, you can't fucking live here. Um, you know what I mean? So like after that, I was just like, well, fuck, what am I supposed to do? And I was like kind of mm-hmm. couch surfing until that like didn't work anymore. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? And then I'm just like sleeping in my jeep and going to fucking local shows and like you know trying my best to like put things together and i would like try to hold down a job but it's like hard to hold on a job whenever you can't fucking you know it's just fucked and then like you know that's what i'm saying like literally like that whole time like i was just like i felt like it was really just like a like me just fighting to like figure something out you know what i mean and then they mm-hmm. fucking showed up and it was just like whoop. <laughs> you know what i mean whoop. thank god there it is dude like fucking something that i can like do Cause I was like, just like, you know, you go from one day, you're like a college athlete, you know what I mean? And you're like, your whole life feels like it's taken care of to like, you have nothing, you know what I mean? Like, it's like yeah. in, a, in a base of a week. Yeah. And so like I, and I dude at the time I was like night, I was like, what, tw- night, I was 20 when I joined the band. Right. Yeah, you were so yeah, I was 19, you know what I mean? Like fucking just trying to figure shit out, like, and like just driving around, having nothing, like no money, no nothing. Like. And it was just, it was hard for a minute until I fucking figured out that I was like, oh, music's cool. And then I, you know, slithered into the local scene, met these dudes, and then fucking we just, you know, hitting hitting the fucking shit ever since, dude. Thankful for them every day, dude. Damn, what what a blessing. Gang initiated you too. That ass, they curbed on me. (laughs) (laughs) That's what happened. Yeah, dude, no. Yeah, no. But that was the whole thing, yeah. I like, sometimes I forget about it, you know what I mean, where I'm just like, wow, that's the thing that happened, but, you know. It is. It is what it is. Kind of did it to myself at the end of the day. Well, it's, I mean, for you, that's such like a learning experience. Like you have like you have such a like a perspective on on your life, and you have something to compare it to. Like they they say that like the worst thing you've been through is the worst thing that you've been through. It's the fact that you know what it's like and not have shit. Yeah, it's it's very. I think that's 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 very healthy. Yeah, you know. Yeah, I definitely. Th- it, it made me like just. I mean, because when I joined the band, I mean, they can attest to like I was just like not mentally put together as an adult you know what i mean you're probably not still right? still not you know what i mean that's <laughs> what i'm saying but like it's just like uh but it forced me to like be thankful for things that i have right because like yeah. if you like you don't have anything like the things that you do have are way more valuable to you mm-hmm. you know sure. because you're, you're you know what it's like to not have any of, of that yes. those things like available to you on a daily basis so yeah that's definitely like one thing that i you know i have everything that we do i i'm like super fucking hyped on it yeah it's because you know the blink of an eye, bro. You could be taking showers in public fountains. <laughs> wow. 
dead ass. Damn, dude. Yeah. Well, I mean, that that definitely explains your camaraderie and like how close you are as like a band. It, it really it really explains that you know. We brothers, dude, for real. Mm-hmm. Shit runs deep. Yeah, right. I could I I could see it with you guys. And I I could definitely feel it. It's cool. Hell yeah. You, you guys are a real band. Holy shit. Yeah, dude. <laughs> Well, shit, Sometimes. Oh, oh yeah. Oh, it's like either, it's, you, you either love him or he's like you fucking hate each other. Yeah. Love it. I love that. Dude. I, I fucking love that. It's that real brother shit. Yeah, you know? dude. Yeah. <laughs> fuck that guy. Yeah. I love you. I love you. Yeah. Yeah. But don't, nobody else say fuck you to them, though. Yeah, you know, sure. like. <laughs> You suck. Let's do mushrooms. Work it out. Exactly. Work it out. <laughs> Working out the brain. So, what's, uh, what's next for you guys? So we got a little uh, future, like? little run in uh, in December that we're about to fucking announce with Upon a Burning Body uh, in Texas, right? Did yeah. I say that already? I said no, in no, December no. in Texas. Yes. Yeah. Texas in December. Okay. <laughs> Texas. Yeah, yeah, and then we have a uh, we have an LP written that I want to show you a couple songs off. Okay. Of it. Yeah. Please. But yeah. it's like because like I think that you're gonna be like, oh wow, this is like really different and like better cool. for y'all. Yeah. But uh, yeah, we have like a whole thing done with a. Uh, Matt Thomas, who did like the new Spite and uh, Darko shit. Oh, great! Yeah, so it's some of the fat, best shit we've fat ever done. Fat mixes, clear as fuck. Like probably some, like literally like some of the best shit that we or the best shit that we've done for yeah, sure. Like easily. point blank period. Yeah. We've never been this hyped to put music like every out. every nice. like in my opinion, every single song on the new LP puts all of the other songs to shame that we've put out to this point. <laughs> yeah, even the weakest <laughs> song, and I don't even know what the weakest song is. Whoa. It's hard Dead to put ass. a finger on it. It's like it, it's interesting. And I'm usually like yeah. way overly like, mm, you know what I mean about like stuff that we write. Yeah, same. Yeah, like oh, sometimes I'm just like, ah, this song's, you know, like whatever. Yeah, that's how I felt about anger before we put it out, dude. But and sh- yeah, I feel you, man. That's our biggest song now. <laughs> it, happens, it happens, dude. It happens. <laughs> Me but, and you were both like, yeah, like bottom two. On the yeah, I was just bro. like, I don't know, yeah, man. Yeah, this yeah, one yeah. fucking yeah. sucks. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, like, but yeah, yeah, like I don't have that feeling about. Any, any of the songs, yeah. and that, which is which is news. fucking wild They're to me. Bops. That's yeah. great. They are. Yeah. It's the first time with live drums too. Oh yeah, yeah true. Yeah, so yeah and he fucking crushed that shit. That, that, we have that's like a, awesome. We have like a blast beat kind of song or whatever. And that dude, yeah. what? How many times does it take you to track it? Twice. I did it in like seventeen minutes. I yeah, think. dude. Yeah. The whole song, oh. like literally, in like like yeah, it's like wild. two takes. Two it sounds something. sick. It's gonna be so dope. It's crazy. So did you do uh, this LP after you recorded those three songs? Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's a wow. completely like separate thing. Right. Yeah. Wow. So, uh, yeah, so, it's so, all the same thing. so what are you doing with those other two songs? So we're just gonna release them as like standalone singles. They're gonna be like basically just radio push songs. Cool. So like we're trying to like kind of dabble over there, see how it is, because mm-hmm. music, you know, dude, like music self expressive. You can do whatever the fuck you want. Sure. You know what I mean? Yeah, you do and both, uh, you know? so we were just like, fuck it, we'll just write these three songs and get out some different wiggles or whatever and they're, they're just gonna be standalone singles and then we have like a whole LP that's like it's own thing we had like an incredibly good time writing yeah. those three songs we're gonna probably go back for like sure that for sure yeah. like but there, we're gonna do more heavy shit too yeah like we're just simultaneously gonna, we're gonna do both like, what a just trip stuff. yeah we're just yeah. basically gonna give everybody whiplash forever yeah. <laughs> that's so interesting yeah holy yeah. cause people like cause it's crazy like we've built a fan base that literally is split in half like, we right. have people who fuck with, like, the choruses and, like, me singing instead. And then yeah. we have, like, the other kids who are, like, just go the whole time. You know what I mean? Like, wow. it's just, like, so it's cool that we have, like, literally two different routes where we can just go yep. and five simultaneously we just keep, like, both. you know and, what I mean? It's and with our track wild. record of our music, too, it's just, like, we kind of throw in an element of, like, unpredictability where it's, like, we just kind of just write whatever we want to, what we're feeling. So, like, it's, yeah. And... I guess maybe from, like, a fan's perspective, it's just kind of like, oh, what are they going to do next? Like, yeah. who knows? Right. And, like, when we were uh, rolling out the release for our Dying Forever, it's like, we definitely gave that vibe by doing like, yeah. a trap metal song, then, like, a deathcore song, and then a black scene song. Yeah. yeah. Still pretty heavy, but... Like, know. literally, like, what we're about to do, like, we literally just released Snake, which is, like, you know, radio, Sick. like, fucking has, like, a good chorus, right? And then, yeah. like, the next song we're about to put out is, like... Heavy. Probably like one of the heaviest songs we've ever written. Yeah. Wow. It's just like belligerent, like like the whole like it's fucked. Damn. It's fucking sick though. And then there's just some breakdowns, dude, and some gutturals. You know what I mean, dude? Some You guys are paving your own way. It's fucking yeah. badass. We're it's just cool. doing whatever we want to do, dude. It's fucking badass. All right. Well, where where can people find you guys? 
on everything. We're on YouTube, yeah, fucking Spotify. We're a little at Left to Suffer on all fucking social media. The I think it's thing. like at Left to Suffer US on Twitter. Yep. Uh-huh. And uh, yeah, we're on YouTube, Apple Music, Spotify. We're just left to suffer, Verified. dude. Verified. Oh, Motherfucker. Oh, verified? Check. Holy shit, you guys are fucking on top, dude. We got motherfucking <laughs> blue check mark now. We cause. really <laughs> have been left to suffer. We yeah, out dude. here, baby. Yeah, we got blue check marks and shit now, so, like, we don't care. No, I'm just playing. <laughs> Good I'm see just you guys, kidding. Man. I love everybody. I love, love you, guys, you dude. Man. All right, everyone. That's it. Later. Oh, yeah.